All right, is everybody ready? It's about six o'clock, so we're going to go ahead and get started and call the meeting to order. Welcome, everybody. Uh, this is our Thursday, March 3rd, Parks, Rec, and Trails Commission meeting, and i um, happy that you're all here. So let's go ahead and um, call our roll, please, Madam Clerk. Commissioner Ken Gaunt. Here. Commissioner Richard Croy. Here. Commission Chair Bill Zimmerman. Here. Commission Vice Chair Thomas Gidroyce. Here. Commission Chair Marty Rosen. Here. All right, and now we're going to um, salute the flag. So if uh, Commissioner Gaunt would be uh, kind enough to lead us, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Okay, uh, Mr. Community Services Director, can you uh, help us with our next one is presentations for Employee of the Month? Thank you, Chair. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, it's my pleasure, as we do this every from time to time, uh, to present some awards for outstanding uh, performance and dedication commitment to the profession and to the department, uh, as well as to the community of Menifee. Uh, for the month of February. And uh, instead of doing the honors, I'd like to invite up uh, Community Services Supervisor Jason Hendricks to, to, to uh, provide. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Thank you, members of the commission. Um, this evening, I'm excited for two reasons. One, to embarrass um, the two ladies that will be calling up because uh, they think they're here to do a presentation for you gentlemen. But little do they know that we'll actually be recognizing them for their hard work really since June, June 22nd when we started, but specifically to highlight what's been going on the past month. Um, as some of you may be aware, we're going through a little bit of a transition period in the Community Services Department, and these two ladies who will be calling up individually have really taken it upon themselves to take the ball and run with it and just go above and beyond, and not only the duties that they have before the transition occurred, but also to take over some of the areas that are now um, yet to be filled at the Senior Center and some of those operations. So they've just done a great job, and they've done it with a smile on their face the whole time, and sometimes not a smile, but still in their hearts doing it for the right reasons. Um, but they're just, I, I can't say enough about both of these, young, these ladies. Um, they just, they come to work every day to work hard. They stay late. Um, they do what they need to do. They are great with the customers. The residents here in Menifee are lucky to have these two ladies as part of the team. And I'm extremely lucky because they always make our department look good. And um, it's, they're the heart and soul of the team. They, they're out there every day dealing with the customers, tr uh, supervising the staff, and just really making this uh, department go in the direction that we need it to go as we move forward here. So... We'll call them up individually so they can get their recognition. So first I will call up Aisha Jamat Wilson. So we have a certificate for them that um, Chair Zimmerman and Robert Lennox, our community services director, signed. And then we also, since they worked so hard, we figured they earned an extra payday. <laughs> See what we did there? We spared no expense here. So there you go. There's a little card and a little gift inside from all of us. And this is from the whole admin team. So as you know, it, it takes a team to make this work. And uh, I just want to thank you so much for everything you've done. Aisha has been taking over the day-to-day -day operations of the Senior Center, doing some of the Youth Advisory Committee activities, special events, and helping out with really do other duties as assigned. And she's just been great doing it with a smile. I've worked with Aisha in another agency, and she's brought that same passion and fire to this position. And sky's the limit for Aisha and everything that she touches. So thank you. And next up, Christina Hernandez. <laughs> Christina is kind of the jack of all trades for our department. She does contract classes, uh, field allocations, special events. Uh, what am I missing? Just a lot of different things. She, she, she does our marketing. She does a lot of our flyers, so we appreciate that. Uh, but she's also taken on additional responsibilities. She's now handling, again for the second time, the indoor and outdoor facility reservations. And as you'll see from some of the reports, we have reservations just about every Saturday and Sunday and spread out throughout the week. So it's a big challenge that Christina continues to rise up to the challenge to, to meet and just continue to exceed the expectations. Residents are always happy. She's very good about getting their refunds back and making sure everything is completely set for their rentals. So Christina, thank you very much. So if you could please uh, 
have the commissioners uh, join us up here for a quick photo opportunity with the employees of the month. Facebook official. <laughs> All right. All right, let's hear it one more time, time for Aisha and Christina. And their, uh, their third little gift is that they don't actually have to stay. They can go now. They don't have to actually present tonight. So enjoy your families and enjoy your weekend after tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, guys, uh, let's go ahead and continue on. Our next item is item five, approval of the February 4th meeting minutes. Any revisions or changes? Well, I'll move that we accept the we have a motion. record for minutes as written. We have a motion. Second. And we have a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, item is approved. Next, do we have any um, agenda modifications, Robert? None. Okay, and uh, are there any public speakers? Seeing none, we'll move to discussion items 8.1, historical monuments. And I think that we've got a few exhibits here to look at. Yeah, Chair, I'll go ahead and defer the presentation of this item uh, to the Park Landscape Maintenance Superintendent, Joe Solano. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Um, we met um, as a couple of weeks ago uh, to discuss some of the locations for the monuments to be placed. Um, and uh, out of, uh, I think, uh, maybe 20 of them, we picked six sites. Uh, and these would be placed in the right-of-ways uh, to make it a little easier for us to, to go ahead and put, put the sites on, on uh, right-of-ways of the city. And as you can see um, down here, you see the six uh, sites that we were uh, that we picked one for William Newport at the KC Center uh, right of way. The other one is James Farrell North Side uh, Newport, uh, east of Getz Road, uh, Menifee School uh, in front of the McDonald's on Newport, uh, Kings Inn would be at, uh, the corner of uh, Bradley and Cherry Hills right of way, front of the new fire station, um, at Romoland High School. I mean Romoland School in 1918. It'll be on the Highway 74. Uh, right away in front of Datatronics and the Mott Brothers, right away in uh, front of the museum there. Um, <clears throat> in the the, uh, the the funding or the cost for this was split between the, the county and the city. The county uh, uh, supervisor Ashley uh, gave ten thousand dollars for that, and the city matched another ten thousand for the first year. We'll be spending twenty thousand dollars. I think um, in the previous, in this report, um, I uh, put down the cost there was $4,200, but um, I talked to, or I got better pricing or another price from the, another contract, and you can see on the, on the slide there that uh, the monuments actually, it's going to be uh, $2,600, so for six of those is 15600 and there's two options for the plaque. 
um, when these would be etched on the on the face of the plaque there you see the the diagram on the left and they would be etched on the on the face of the 45 degree angle there uh, into the concrete or we can do with the etching in the on a granite piece of rock that would be placed onto that 45 degree face and you can see the price of the concrete would be 250 and the granite would be 350 now that is with the um, a very simple just the name of the of the the family or the gentleman the, uh, of the uh, historical site uh, uh, date uh, three to four uh, sentence paragraph and then the the Menifee Historical Association down at the bottom um, I did not ask him for the logos I forgot about the logos but that would be probably another added cost but I think that um, um, we would you know be in that ballpark figure of the twenty thousand dollars for the for the six um, the, the other thing with this this uh, design is that the the found or the footing is already attached it's one piece and it's uh, at the weight of it is 2100 pounds so it wouldn't move once you got set into the ground um, <clears throat> so uh, that's that's what I have for that report uh, what is it that Well, if I can add a couple of points to, to the report as well, on the first attachment to the staff report, you'll see the, the map of where these would be placed, at least what's proposed. Uh, as Joe mentioned, we did meet with the uh, Historical Association about uh, what, what realistically in the immediate future, what are good viable locations, and Joe has identified those um, here, um, and I want to thank uh, uh, Chair Zimmerman for his assistance with this as well. Um, a couple things to, to determine for this evening in this item is, one, uh, what kind of finish would the commission prefer to see on these monuments? Uh, as you can see in the far left picture, you've got a veneer, uh, rock veneer finish appear, appearance, and then uh, the center and the far right are both uh, like a, just a smooth concrete uh, finish. Now, keep in mind the face, the front face, of the uh, uh, monument is intended to have uh, the etching logo of the historical association on it, right? And then, of course, on the top 45, um, whether it's granite or concrete, we'll uh, certainly go back and ensure that the, the logos of both the county and the city are included there as well. So there's some, there's some other pieces to this that are a little bit more difficult to identify in these diagrams. You can sort of see in the bottom two uh, uh, renderings that we've 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 incorporated them to it to the extent that we can uh, so the decision for you or the recommendation from you what kind of finish would you like to see and then is there concurrence on the six locations that are identified on uh, the first attachment in the staff report uh, as staff has presented Uh, Commissioner, I don't remember who was first, but let's start with Rick Croy. Yeah, um, the, the locations look good to me. Um, as far as the finish goes, it seems to me that the, the one in the middle there with the, the blue um, etching, uh, <clears throat> as opposed to the with the rock uh, facade on it, will last longer. Um, it, uh, nobody's going to move a 2,200-pound piece of stone as opposed to somebody coming up and <clears throat> trying to mess with the uh, other kind. I've seen that happen and it's not pretty. And uh, Commissioner Rosen. Well, the um, six locations are fine. I am going strictly by aesthetics now. I like the left one, even though it is pieces of stone. It just looks nicer. I don't know. It just Mm -hmm. But if you feel that that's more prone to be damaged, then I would go along with the middle one. <clears throat> uh, can, can. Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Yeah. <clears throat> who, who is going to see these things? I, I really kind of question the value of even having them. I, I, only because somebody's asked me, who cares? Uh, well, 
it is nice, but it's twenty thousand dollars. Is that a wise expenditure? I don't know. Well, let me answer that one. <clears throat> um, just so you know, this idea came from a discussion I was having with our supervisor, Marion Ashley. We were at um, Paris's historical association event in downtown Paris where they've spent a lot of money to upgrade and do facade work and a lot of really nice things there. And he said, isn't it sad that Menifee doesn't have an old town to preserve? like Murrieta does in Temecula and Paris and all of these other Lake Elsinore, they have an old town. And, and we, what we have is folks that were living here, but this area was primarily just farmers yeah. and homesteaders, people that raise sheep or, or uh, eggs and mostly wheat. And so we have a story to tell and we know who was here. The Historical Association is really going strong. We have over a thousand photographs from the last hundred years of all of those families and the things that were taking place. A lot of these streets that you see, uh, Newport Road, uh, Han Road, Cali Kirkpatrick School, these are all named after people that were here in the, in the uh, last hundred years. And so we have a rich heritage and we want to preserve that. We just don't have an old town to throw money at and really try to draw people to. This is kind of his idea, and I really like it. It's something that we can um, do for a, a very limited cost for a total of $20,000 to be able to get six of these placed around the city so that people can um, get a sense of pride in their community. I think that's really the intent. And then also to make it so that our history is not just obscured in oblivion, but actually placed in perpetuity for the next uh, generation of people that come along. And um, the, some of the future ones, just so you know, uh, include like Fred McCall. You've seen McCall Road, but who's McCall? Yeah. He was a county supervisor. He was the longest serving county supervisor in Riverside County. He served 24 years. Most people don't know that. And his property was right over there, uh, kind of by where Heritage Lakes is. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to have one of these monuments there that explain who it is. And ultimately, the idea would be people could take a self-guided tour with a pamphlet that shows you a map and where all of these are. Kids can um, ha do a field trip, or they can even have an extra credit assignment at school and go to these places and, and read about the people that were our pioneer families and, and original settlers. So um, that is our old town. We're creating it right here. And you got to sometimes think out of the box when you don't have something that's so obviously easy to fix up, you got to sort of create that. And so, good explanation. I appreciate it. Yeah, that's kind of where this Makes all sense. came from. Makes yeah. a lot more sense. And, and, you know, our supervisor, he's got a heart for Menifee. He lives here now, but he kind of grew up just a little bit north of here in the Paris area in Nuevo. And so, this was the stomping grounds, and he knows a lot of the people and a lot of families that were here. So, he's saying, Bill, this is the time. If we don't preserve it now in Menifee, this is just going to be a lost community where no one's really going to know what happened. So, um, and, and I'll stick a little plug in here just so you guys know. Um, the Historical Association is opening a uh, museum. It's at the Menifee Elementary School that's closed, and so the school district um, allowed us to have that. And um, we're going to open that in the next month or so. It's, we're, we got like three things we're trying to finish up before we open the doors, but once we do, I invite all you guys to come and I think you're going to really be amazed and it'll give you a real sense of pride knowing just kind of like the you were just showing us the Sun City yeah. pamphlet and that's neat to see it's very nostalgic and it kind of gives you an idea of what was happening here 50 years ago. We've got a lot of those same kinds of photos but it's things that were happening 100 years ago and 150 years ago and even a Native American display so um, anyway I think it's we're we're a very new and young city, but unless you have compassion and vision and money, and that's what it takes, um, that those are the kinds of things and these kinds of projects are, I think, what really make that happen for the people that come here in the future. So, Good. All right, let's move to uh, Commissioner. Actually, I think Joe, oh, Robert, I'm sorry. Uh, just a couple quick things to add. It might help also answer the question that was posed uh, in the next fiscal year, uh, one of the uh, CIP projects we'd like to bring before commission for consideration is uh, a trail inventory. So we certainly finished our master plan process, which includes 
the all of the proposed trails in the city, uh, but that doesn't necessarily codify their existence or the ability to do those. So with that project, though, we'd incorporate all of these historical monument locations, and the end result is intended to be a network that people can either view on uh, on their computer, uh, on the city website, or when they're in one of our facilities, grab a pamphlet on trails, which would highlight some of these locations. So if they want to do a walking tour, they'd be able to get the information from the city as well. Uh, and then the second thing is uh, a, one of the benefits of having the smooth concrete finish is that these can be coated with graffiti coating, uh, anti-graffiti coating. So uh, if they get tagged, uh, it's a lot easier to clean up. You, know, you don't have to replace the whole thing. You don't have to sandblast it. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a much simpler maintenance task. Thank you for that. Uh, Commissioner Gidrose. Thank you. I agree with the locations, and I also like the concrete. And for the reason you just brought up, that's the second reason why it would make sense. These things need to last for a very long time, and we do need to take a long view. Years from when we are talking now, these will still be there. We're preserving the past for people who haven't moved to this town yet or even been born. It will get gentrified, whether we like it or not, some of us. And in that time, they'll say, oh, yes, this was here, and it does have significance. It gives a sense of place. I support everything Bill was just saying. So I just want to say I agree with everything you've said. I think that we're doing something in the long term for the future, and it's going to help people when they come into this town, when they settle in this town, to know that there is an identity that's not just a, a thing on the map, like so many towns around here actually have become. And I just came from Orange County earlier today, and I can assure you a few markers over there would have made things a little different. I was in Old Town Tustin, they had some nice markers, and it does make a difference. You could say, okay, I understand this place and its history a little bit. So I uh, thank you. I just wanted to put in my two cents worth on that. Uh, and Commissioner Rosen. Uh, again, I'm looking at the aesthetics of the thing. Wouldn't it be easier for people if what they were looking at was on a 45 degree angle than flat down it is mm -hmm. the one on the on the right is at a 45 degree angle the one on in the middle looks to me to be relatively flat down i think these are these are samples so it's not to suggest that each of these ex is exactly 45 but to give you an idea of the various finish types that are available so, so regardless of the finish it would be brought up and put on a 45 degree angle? Yeah, if you, if you look at the supporting attachments in your uh, staff report, the dimensions, the actual dimensions of what the finished product would be are there. Uh, and I'll point you to, if you look at um, model 803 in the outdoor creations cut sheet, detail sheet, you'll see uh, 40 inches, I'm sorry, there's two options. Uh, I think we're going for 803, 49 uh, and a half inches tall uh, on the back end, uh, and it's a 45 degree angle with a 21 and a quarter inch um, height just for the plaque area. So it is fairly front facing and it's fairly tall too. It's tall enough to see, for, you know, without having to bend over too, too, too much. Uh, in which case, I would like my uh, commissioners here to determine whether they prefer it to be that bluish color or the which is in the middle or whatever sand color or whatever that is on the right because either way we're going to be able to bring it up to 45 degrees is one etched and is one raised lettering or do we know yeah. Both of them would be etched. etched yeah. Yes. Is it possible to have a different color besides the blue? The city has its kind of own color scheme going here with that tan. Uh, yeah, there's different colors that you can do on the concrete finish and or the the either the finish itself. could do it. Yes. Okay. So something more matching the city logo. Yes. Exactly. Uh, my opinion is I like the one on the left with the stack stone. Uh, just so you know, that's not supporting itself with those stacked stones it'll be a, a 
basically it'll have a concrete shell like the one on the right and then they just use a thin set mortar and stick those on the outside which is what i preferred the first time right. i was told it would, could bring it would be very hard to remove graffiti from it it could be there's a lot we have stacked stone on other things in the community right isn't there some other monuments here and there that not that the city maintains no. those are probably all private okay but you can cr you can do a graffiti coat on stacked stone as well right it's just sprayed on you can, yeah. Um, it, it's a different application. You're right. It, yeah. We've never really had to remove anything from that, so it's hard to say. Yeah. It just aesthetically, and actually all three of them are great. Um, and I would, I like the idea of having it etched and not actually having a brass plaque or something that some turkey's going to want to take to the recycling place and get <laughs> 15 bucks. Anyway, those are my comments. But thanks for the effort and, and all of this, Joe. This is really nice. I hadn't seen any of this yet, and this, this looks good. So we have to make a decision. We do. It sounded like we're kind of split. I'll compromise. Okay. <laughs> now, the, 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 <clears throat> my point was the, uh, the uh, graffiti, but, uh, you know, the stone does look nice, and, you know, that'll last forever also if it's properly maintained. Okay, so if that's the case, then I would make a motion that we accept the general plan of the one on the left and um, have it treated so that it's less likely to have a problem with graffiti. And, and now that you pointed out, the more I look at the one in the middle, it does look like a coffin. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's flat down. It looks that way anyway. Yeah, Bruni, did you have a comment? No. That's Joe. Uh, yeah, it's me. Um, just to, to let you know, the, there will be an, a little added cost to that uh, stack stone if we did do that. So we might uh, bring down the inventory to five instead of six. So um, the, 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 the money or the quote I got was just for a smooth concrete finish. So just to clarify your motion, it's going to be etched stone. Correct. But it's also going to have some kind of a finish on it so that it would make it easier to clean should it be necessary. So what you're saying is if we, if we can only do five, do we have to cut one out You mean right to now? tell me we can't find the extra $500 to, to do all of them? Well, I don't, I, I'm not sure. I think the monies is, is uh, allocated the 10000 and 10000 right? Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's our... That's the only money we have to spend on this. Um, we just did uh, the monuments uh, at La Ladera, uh, Peterson, Lazy Creek, and uh, Lyle Marsh Park with anti-graffiti uh, cover on it, the paint. Uh, so this would probably be the same thing that we would do on those if we did the stack stone uh, veneer on those. And Joe, do you anticipate that the vendor would install all five or six at the same time or yes I, I, that's that was my plan to get them all ordered and put them all at one time that way the crane cost would be reduced also okay that's what i was going to say maybe there's a cost savings there if not but if you're already you're already doing that mm. well i mean I, I i i hate to cut one out you know what i mean and originally, actually, to be to tell you the truth, we've got 15 locations that we've picked on the map that we really think are ideal. And so, you know, if we're only going to do five, then, and we were hoping to finish this in a two-year, with a total of forty thousand dollars in a two-year project. So, if we're only able to get five done with the first twenty thousand, we're obviously not going to make the fifteen. We're going to end up at ten, unless there's a more monetary commitment. But uh, we'd have to cross that path when we get there. So, anyway, but I had made a motion. I think you need a second. <clears throat> Marty, would you restate? Because so you're saying we should go with stack stone. Stack concept. stone with a treatment on it uh, that would make it easier to clean should it be necessary okay with a um, the etching is happening anyway and we should it should be 
roughly 45 degree angle to make it easier to see. Okay. We still need a second for that. I will second that. Okay. All right. Um, just before we all vote, um, can Bernie, do you mind moving the slide back to the cost estimate slide? And so I just want to make sure we're looking at our numbers correctly. It looks like there's there would still be about eight hundred and eighty dollars left over. And could we do the treatment, whatever the paint is, for that amount of money? Um, yes, I believe so. Yeah, so we could get this. six in. With the smooth finish and the, and the anti-graffiti, yes, we can do the all six. Otherwise, we got to take one off the list. Yeah, but if we can do it, let's do it. If we can do all six, let's do yeah. all six. Because this budget, Marty, doesn't include stack stone concept. This is just for the smooth finish. And, and Joe's saying that if we were to opt, like your motion, for the stack stone, that it'd blow this budget. Wait a minute. May I? The plaque, of course, is the same. That doesn't make a difference. Yes, uh, but the monument, right. 2600 and you're saying that the stack stone cannot be done for 2600 uh no i don't I, the quote is just for uh, the smooth finish um cut sheet there on 803 um the stack stone would be added extra it would but be you, an added cost how much would that be i'm gonna guess probably roughly off the top of my head 300 dollars per monument maybe so it could be $1,200 more, and we've got 880 left over. I mean, we're really close. What if we work this vendor down and tell him, hey, we need, we need six? Well, maybe we <laughs> can get city council to come up with $400. Okay. Tell him. I think the option is that we can certainly ask the vendor, but uh, before you all tonight, is the, uh, if we have to eliminate one, which one would it be? Certainly, staff is going to advocate to get all six. We just don't want to give any you know, false hope that that is attainable with the given budget. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Uh, yes, Commissioner Gaunt, sorry. What, uh, what's wrong with the solid, you know, without the, the brick, the veneer? What, what was the negative? Um, it was that it didn't, it wasn't as, as aesthetically pleasing as the stack stone in a couple of commissioners' opinions. Well, the reason I ask is because <clears throat> that uh, that brick stuff is the same stuff they put on houses and, for, you know, it's just it's glued on. Glued on. And it's something that we can always come back down the road if uh, and add if you wanted. So it seems to me we should just go with the smooth one and with what's, uh, what's been brought before us. Interesting. Well, if we did that, and if that's if everyone's agreeable to that then we need to have a new sense of this commission as to if that's the better option is to build them build the less expensive version and then maybe consider dressing them up down the road well we'd be able to dress up four or five of them and just one of them would not be they need to be consistent. They all need to look the same, don't Do you they? think? I think so. Yeah, they yeah. should. It would look funny if all of a sudden there was one that... It's so far apart. How would it... Well, after a period of time, there's going to be more out there, so people will recognize them as a menifee marker. Okay. Right. Well, something else to consider in this as well is on the front face of the monument, you recall that we'll have to have etched in there the logo for the Historical Association. So. Uh, aesthetically, it won't be a contiguous uh, stack stone veneer all the way around. The front, at least the portion where that mon where that logo is, is going to be just the solid concrete with the etching. So, what uh, it, it's very hard for us to put that together on here to show you what it'll look like. But uh, visualize that in your mind when you're considering this. This. You're also going to have to put on 
the logo of the city and the county. Yeah, that goes on the plaque. On the plaque, on plaque. top. Okay. <clears throat> and let me ask a quick question. I noticed there was um, a drawing that showed that plaque, and you were going with the city's not the seal but the logo with the tree mm -hmm. should that not be the seal so that it sort of matches the county's seal actually the city is in the process of rebranding and going transitioning to the the tree okay as its primary the seal would be reserved reserved mostly for things like letterhead so even our business cards will no longer have the seal on it oh yeah interesting all right and uh, rick did you have um, my only observation is if we had to choose uh, to eliminate one to go with the stack stone, it would be, for me anyway, it would make sense to uh, delay the one in front of uh, Datatronics there just because I don't think there's that much foot traffic right there. Yeah, that's very true. It, it's, a, it's neat that it's still there. The original school is there. Datatronics is using the building, but it is... The original school for that area mm -hmm. actually Mary and Ashley attended that school yeah, I've heard there's a picture of them there yeah. third grade or something All right well I, I kind of agree with you on that one that one it's there's not a lot of foot traffic and it is it is kind of a difficult place to mm -hmm. get to or figure out how to get to it we've got so many variables here Bill you know, that if you eliminate the stacking in the front on the monument on the left and put in the seal instead, does that cover cost? Or is you're going to save a lot of money because you're not putting the stacking on the front of every one of those six? I don't know. I'm, I'm asking already because we're we're removing some things and putting some other things on. I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure I understand the question. I, I don't know that the the proposal is necessary to remove anything. No, you're it, not removing it. You're not putting it on. You yourself said that uh, if there was stacking on the one on the left, that the front part of it would not have stacking. So right away you're saving the stacking, whatever that costs, for the front of all six. Yeah, I, th I think the what you have to um, understand in uh, the, the fabrication of these is you're really paying for the labor, less of the material. So it doesn't cost much less for them to cut out the space for that historical logo. Uh, they still have a mason sitting there and mortaring on these pieces of, of stone veneer. Uh, and it wouldn't completely remove or, or um, uh, you know, eliminate the uh, veneer on the front. It would just be the area in which that logo is. So it was not a huge, huge space. If you see on the bottom two uh, renderings, the far right one's probably more clear on the bottom right, that is only a small portion of the front itself. So we are stuck because we don't know what course we're dealing with. <clears throat> Final course. How, how about if we do something like this? Let's see if, uh, if Mr. Solano can talk to the vendor and get the, get the stack stone within our budget. If we cannot, then we'll go with the other option. But let's try to do all six of them. And it would be the best case scenario if you're able to is to see if you can't um, get it done with the stack stone. But if if it's just impossible and it's way over budget, then you know then we would uh, you know allow for the for the to go with the other design that's less expensive. What do you, what do you guys think about that? Well, sounds reasonable to me. I can work with that. Yeah, I could work with it too, but I just have Go ahead. one question. Yeah. Would it be unthinkable to ask some of these, some of our uh, residents for a donation to help with the cost? 
especially the families involved? I'd start with the city manager and say, what's in petty cash? <laughs> well, we're not talking about a lot of money to begin with, but could we go to the Mott family or to the, uh, you know, and just explain our slight difficulty? Yeah, or do you rather not want to do that? I mean, uh, just that would really be the only one. Del Webb's not around. Mm -hmm. You know, Farrell's, Newport, they're all. Mm -hmm. Those families are no longer around, so. Well, I, I think you, I think the commission's provided some good priority on what you'd like to see, and if 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 the motion is to do it within, you know, that, uh, I guess you call it priority phasing. I think that's clear direction to us. Uh, just a vote on that would set us on the right path, mm -hmm. and then we could report back once we've got the project started about what was selected. That's a great okay. idea. So my, um, I don't even think we need. We're just we giving, need a We're just giving now. direction and. Okay. I think they have a sense of uh, mm -hmm. what we'd like to do. Make it as aesthetically pleasing as possible. Stay within budget. Um, and work them down. We're trying to work them down, yeah. If you want some some uh, tough guys to go with, yeah. I'll use idea. my gift of gab I have. See what happens. All right. Marty's, Thank, Marty's thanks, from Joe. Jersey. You might know some people. Yeah, right. <laughs> All right. So let's go ahead and, and uh, move on now. So we are... With the next discussion item is 8.2 EMWD Community Services Drought Status Update. Thank you, Chair. I just want to kick it off real quickly with a recap of some of the requests that came from the Commission. It's probably been a couple months by now, uh, which was to come back to you all with an update on uh, our uh, drought situation, conservation efforts. Uh, this is a small piece of that. We want to return to you in the future with additional information, but this should uh, suffice in providing um, some initial background information, where we are today, and some of the things we've been doing to try and battle uh, or counteract um, some of the restrictions that have been placed on really all residents, not just uh, the city as an agency uh, within Menifee and in Southern California. So. Uh, Joe will provide uh, some basic information and then I'll fill in after that uh, with the report. Um, yeah, just to update you on the efforts here, uh, as you know, uh, back in uh, uh, earlier last year, we got, uh, the governor gave us a 28% uh, reduction in water use. And then in September, we got, we got a 30% reduction. And then this last January, we got up to a 70% reduction in watering which is uh, really difficult for us. You know, we're trying to maintain uh, a nice, safe environment out in the parks, especially the sports turf areas. Um, well, we've, we've, we try to work with Eastern Municipal Water District, trying to aggregate all our meters to kind of like say, you know, we're only using so much in this area, in this area, in this area. Can we pull all our, our credits, let's say, for that so we can water our sports turf and our parks uh, a little more than than, uh, than we can once, once, a, once a week uh, to try to keep that green. Um, we're compiling all our numbers with all our meters that we have uh, in, the, on our, in our department, and we'll sit down with them and, and they'll tell us how much, uh, how much we can use at each other location, like La Ladera and Lyle Marsh, um, because those are big, big turf areas that we need to water. Um, uh, as of November 9th to February 5th, we stopped the watering all the, all the uh, everything uh, in the city. So we have a big cost savings there. Um, we have just started recently watering once a week for I think it says 10 uh, for 10 minutes per station, all uh, like the drip irrigation uh, systems, like right of ways or medians. The sports turf are actually twice a week, 15 minutes per station, trying to get that, trying to get the green to stay. Uh, hopefully, with some of this rain this weekend, it'll help us out. Well, we'll be shutting off the sprinkler systems actually throughout the city. Uh, for the for uh, Sunday and Monday, um, and like it's, uh, our watering bills have uh, reduced down to by 50 percent on this uh, on the con conservation we we're doing. Um, <clears throat> with that, we've also uh, are upgrading our our um, irrigation system. Our irrigation controllers at CalSense to a central control, so we communicate with all the controllers uh, at the office, and we can shut like 
this coming uh, Monday and Sunday and Monday, we can shut everything off at the at the central location. We've got a few uh, controllers that still have to get uh, modified and upgraded for the radio, so they can uh, talk to the central at the office. Uh, that way, it's easier for us to manage our watering and our and our budget that way. What were you doing before this? Manually uh, going out there and yes, you would have to manually go put it on a rain uh, rain delay, or if you had a rain sensor. Uh, you relied on your rain sensor to turn off your irrigation system. Yeah, those hardly work. Yeah, you're right. I know the HOA has been using the automatic for 10 years, at least. In all the cases you're talking about, it's potable water. We're not talking recycled. Right, yes. It's just the potable water is where we get the penalties if we exceed um, our allotted uh, portion. Uh, <laughs> Actually, yes, and uh, Robert's got some of that information for you. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this is just for uh, potable water. Um, we have leave three parks on the re recycled water right now, the two new parks and P Peter uh, Peterson Park. Okay. Um, so those are, are a big savings for us right now. So I'll let Robert touch base on the other portion on that reclaimed water. A couple of other small items. Uh, we recently did attend a meeting uh, with the MWD. Several agencies did actually. Uh, Menifee, Marietta, uh, Temecula, uh, Paris, Elsinore. Uh, there were others as well uh, because we're all affected by this and they wanted to field questions and provide more information about what the 70% uh, reduction means uh, and uh, how our conservation factor affects uh, really the quality of, I believe, the quality of life uh, for residents here. As you all know, uh, the condition of our facilities typically uh, is, a ter is one of the driving factors in people's quality of life. Their, their, their likelihood, their, uh, their willingness to go out and recreate um, is usually uh, influenced by the, the way things look. Uh, and so we attended this meeting and they gave a rundown on each of these things and provided some opportunities for us. As Joe, Joe mentioned, uh, currently the way bills are assessed is on a meter by meter basis. And so when you're looking at your water budget, uh, really it, it, is, it is all of the meters, uh, each on their own budgets. And so the question was raised, can we aggregate uh, meters to better uh, achieve the 0.7 uh, reduction uh, conservation factor and the answer uh, in short was yes um, they are willing to sit down with us and uh, aggregate uh, like meters so all potable and all you know all potable for us mostly is is our biggest concern because recycled water uh, does not have these limitations there's no conservation limit for those uh, and there's no penalty on the tiered pricing for those either uh, so they are amenable to that. Um, we're uh, setting up a meeting to do that. In addition, there's about $250,000, uh, they estimate, in excess grant funds that would have, uh, or that were originally allocated to other agencies who are trying to convert, uh, uh, you know, potable sites or their, their recycle lines to extend to where potable is the only option uh, and providing recycle at those sites instead. Uh, and that would be tremendous for us because, as Joe mentioned, we only have three parks that currently have recycled water. And so um, some of the things that I wanted to highlight, and this is pulled from me in WD's uh, uh, December report uh, on what the impacts of the stage four drought mean and the tier differences. Um, at the time, this was at the 50% reduction. Uh, this was the, essentially the penalty. And if you look at tier two and four, what it essentially does is outdoor use uh, on tier two is now bumped up and the penalty or the, the rate for excessive use or wasteful use for outdoor is now where you see the four. So the tier two price uh, is now at the $10 mark per unit, which is pretty dang high. It's a huge increase. Mm. Um, additionally, as you can see, this was again, was pulled from back in December. Um, there it is. This is when they first wanted it reduced by 10% above the, uh, the initial uh, request that came from the governor. Uh, and so uh, in, in it, in essentially uh, it, it meant that we had to do better. And that was collectively as all agencies in, in, within the district. 
the map in, here in front of you shows EMWD's current uh, backbone of recycled water throughout the city and just beyond. Uh, it's hard to see, I know. Um, we're actually asking for them to provide a more detailed map, but to give you an idea, the main, the main uh, I guess you could say, the main main line for recycle essentially runs along Normandy uh, and continues all the way um, along there, uh, Salt Creek, uh, to the freeway, and you see it jog up and a crossover, um, uh, technically behind the oasis and on to the other side of the city. Uh, our main main inch, our main interest for that additional leftover two hundred fifty thousand dollars would be getting a park like La Ladera on recycled because it is a huge consumer right now. No, it, it, it could be any city, uh, and so the, the monies are up for grab. We just have to provide them with uh, a project list, uh, and of course, it, I'm sure it's, there's a competitive process uh, for them to select, but they have the bill records. They know what the biggest bang for their buck will be, and I'm, I'm very confident that if, you know, once they look at Lawlet Errors, you still say, yeah, that's probably a, one of the best candidates, yeah. Uh, and so, um, as I mentioned, those are only the only three. All other facilities we have are on potable. So it, it, it certainly is a challenge. And if we were to transition the others, we wouldn't have a uh, reduction limitation on those. Uh, and so Sports Park, Peterson, and Spirit Park don't have a reduction limitation right now. To give you an idea, uh, they would just be at the normal uh, outdoor use tier, which would be 328 a unit, no matter how much you use and recycle water. And this, this pr price per unit may have changed since October because I know they had some, uh, some or resolutions passed to change their pricing recently. Uh, what I did provide to you was a more updated uh, presentation from them back in January. And basically all this said was, uh, the stage four uh, C that it's been elevated to essentially prohibits uh, any, any um, commercial, uh, residential, and industrial customers um, from irrigating non-functional turf. So obviously functional would be our sports turf areas, but non-functional, they've basically said, you can't, you can't water that. Uh, and so really our task is you recall from about six months ago uh, was to identify what is functional, what is non-functional, and we did that exercise. And recall that the price tag to convert that was about $1.7 million. Uh, and so we're still eager that state board is going to provide some funding to put back in that program for cities to get a subsidy on conversion. Uh, the program called for, I believe it was about $4 per square foot uh, match of conversion dollars you could use. Uh, first two weeks that program was out, all the money was accounted for. And so we're hoping more money is introduced, but it is a big guessing game. We'll have to wait and see. It'd be nice if they gave more money to the desert cities, but probably not doing it that way. That would be nice. Yeah. Yeah. So um, this is really just a receive and file for you all. We, again, we'll return uh, at future meetings with more updates uh, as we continue to talk with the MWD about these options, if there's projects that they find uh, us to be the best candidates for, we'll obviously bring those to you as well. Uh, and as Joan mentioned, we, we keep finding opportunities to switch out our irrigation control. Believe it or not, that, that is a huge saving to us, not just in time, uh, but also in, in water use because we, when we have that system, not only does it allow you remote control, but also it, it notifies us when there's trouble in the system. So pressure difference, differences, changes, breaks. Traditionally, you wouldn't know about those until you were out on site or someone called in and complained. Uh, and with this system, we can know uh, immediately to your smartphone, hey, there's a problem and we can send someone out uh, to, you know, to fix it. <laughs> One quick question on the map here is where it is uh, the, the lighter blue over there where the, the, the new uh, Regen. Regen, is that uh, future lines that are going to go? It's future and already paid for, so that's, oh, yes, okay. that's part of that. Um, and I, I was going to highlight as well, uh, we will talk with Brookfield on the AMR North projects to see about getting an extension of recycle line up to, uh, I'll call it the backside of La Ladera, 
just in case, uh, because then we only have to tie in right. very locally. It looks like it's already really close. It is. Yeah. <clears throat> the school site that is on the back side of La Ladera Park is intended to be on recycle. Okay, so thanks for that update, and let's move on to item nine, community services director comments, starting with nine one capital improvement. Um, <clears throat> the update on the uh, CS uh, zero four, and that's uh, the Sun City median. Uh, landscape uh, we uh, delivered the plans for uh, we submitted the plans to Eastern for review uh, we should be getting back by uh, next week Wednesday um, hopefully we can get that project moving um, looking at probably uh, the 21st the week of the 21st of this month to get that thing started uh, on the um, the Paloma wash trail that we're still waiting for the purchase order on that for the slurry seal on the trail and crack uh, seals uh, on the uh, CS6, uh, we have uh, the purchase order was issued for the picnic shelter. Uh, we're wa um, working on the uh, bid for uh, concrete and uh, the footing uh, uh, installation on that, um, and that's at um, Peterson Park. Uh, CS07 Park Furnishing staff uh, sent out uh, informal bids for to vendors for park furnishings. Uh, for tables and barbecues, um, I should be getting it back by Monday uh, and, and get those ordered. Um, <clears throat> the Rancho Ramona uh, Park restroom, I'm working on the specs for engineering consultant to come in uh, to engineer the point of connection and the uh, pad construction for the uh, restroom installation. Uh, AMR skate park, the fencing, the flat bar was welded and painted. Uh, along the, the middle section of the of each panel uh, we're waiting for the extensions to be fabricated they're being fabricated at the uh, fence company shop uh, we're looking at maybe next week uh, to start the installation on those and also the uh, the gate itself uh, had to be modified uh, we cannot use a turnstile gate because there's no turnstile gate that's ADA except uh, acceptable or uh, <coughs> registered on anywhere so we can use one of those so I'm waiting for the contractor to give me a, 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 a rendering or drawing of that new gate that we'll be putting in um, but it'll still have the same uh, security system with magnetic lock and the timer on that um, and then we did put in a new clock over at the LLMD zone 3 location 8 off Scott Road in that little area there um, They've been really working diligently on that to bring that up to uh, presentable levels. Uh, so they're working, uh, it's working pretty good. So these, um, as you can see, just some of the drawings in, uh, that we'll be doing for the uh, um, CIP projects. We also did the four parks, the monuments. If you look at the monument uh, picture up on the top right, uh, La Ladera, Lyle Marsh, Peterson, and Lazy Creek. Uh, those four monuments at those parks, uh, we had the logo uh, installed. <clears throat> I'm going to keep going. Uh, there's not much new development in the uh, Parks and Progress update. Uh, the only real thing, and it's not it's not listed on here as a change because it's purely just been a meeting, is uh, chatting with the uh, developer of the uh, subdivisions that are on Evans, just south of Newport, uh, known as uh, Pacific Communities. Uh, they are eager to get their plans uh, in for their second park. The first park plans uh, were resubmitted, um, oh, it's probably been about six months uh, and we made changes based off of some of the water quality changes since their very first submittal, which was probably three years prior. And so now they're eager to move on both parks and we're waiting for the planned submittal. The meeting though was really about 
uh, ensuring they comply with our new camera standards. Uh, as you all know, all of our new parks need to have uh, security surveillance systems installed. And so uh, this was a very important meeting to have because as soon as uh, the first parks in, in the AMR area were uh, outfitted with those, uh, all others quickly understood this was, this was an important feature that needed to be included, uh, especially in the skate park, which is what we're having to retrofit right now. Uh, so all in all, not much has changed. Um, that isn't to say there is an activity. It just means that new applications haven't come in. Uh, at future meeting, I will be bringing to you a new trail project. Um, so really what that means is there is some commercial development that is uh, submitting applications, uh, and part of their conditions include uh, trail improvements along, you know, the corridors in which they're doing the installments. And um, so those will be somewhat new. We, I don't think you've seen many of those prior, uh, but I think it's time, especially since the master plan has been completed and we know where those trails are supposed to be. Uh, this is the time to start having those developers do it. Great. Good evening again, commissioners. I have a brief recreation division update for you gentlemen this, uh, this evening on the February 2016 highlights for the recreation division. Um, we had a great month. Um, I'm happy to report that revenues are up and expenditures are, are pretty lean. We're keeping things pretty lean and we're trying to do the most we can with uh, what we have to offer. And thankfully we have a lot of key partners and contract class instructors that make things easy, easier for us to deliver those services um, at a pretty uh, low cost. Uh, as you'll see in front of you, the senior center drop-in program we're over 2,500 this year, this month. Um, the, the most important thing about that for us is that our FSA lunch that they provide continues to go up and they continue to offer great service. But also, um, we have some new partners coming in doing some presentations um, on April, and I'm sorry, I don't have the exact date, but I can definitely get it to you. Uh, Senior Advisory Committee Chairperson Gloria Sanchez, uh, in collaboration with uh, Mary and Ashley's office, is putting on an emergency preparedness uh, seminar, if you will, for seniors specifically at the center. Um, it's going to be part of the senior symposium series, so we're excited to kick those off to give seniors some additional information on, on some of the things they need to be aware of. Um, and then also on the senior end of things, uh, we have our health fair coming up on May 23rd, which is Monday. Definitely want to invite the commission to be a part of that. Um, we already have probably 15 to 20 vendors that are interested in coming out and providing valuable resources and information to our senior uh, demographic. Um, and we also have um, some presenters lined up, uh, some, health, some live screenings that will be taking place. So it's going to be a really good opportunity. Evans Brown is providing the lunch uh, for the seniors, so they're one of our key partners and sponsors on that event. So that's going to be a great event as well. And then also we, we recognize Aisha, and one of the reasons Aisha is such a valuable part of the team is that she comes up with new and creative and innovative ways to do things for um, all of the, all of the uh, participants that she works with. So the newest one that she came up with, she came to me, and um, there's a uh, Paula Casino offering where they send out a bus um, to basically pick up the seniors from the senior center, bring them out to the casino, and provide them with a free concert, which is a, a Dean Martin, I, yeah, Dean, sorry, Dean Martin, um, I guess, tribute singer. Uh, so the seniors get to enjoy that for free. They also get 30% off the buffet, and they get to spend the day doing some gambling and, and having fun with uh, uh, their neighbors and, and, and leisure activities. So we'll be Who doing that. Who provides the money for the gambling? Say that again, I'm sorry? Who provides the money for the gambling? Oh, they provide that on their own. Yeah, that's not something we're going to get into. <laughs> they, they actually, Paula pretty much provides everything. Um, we're just going to send a staff member, but other than that, there's no cost to the seniors unless they want to, like I said, do a little gambling or um, have partake in the buffet. But other than that, it's a free, free trade. It's a $5 cost for them just to cover staff costs. But other than that, it's going to be a, a great opportunity for them. So we're going to look to continue that series as we go along. Um, let's see. And then in front of you, oh, I'll get to the special events report later. I'm sorry. Uh, the Lazy Creek After School Program continues to be a hit. We, we are averaging about 20 to 25 per month. This month we had 22. Um, our contract classes continue to pick up. We just started a new class that actually kicks off tomorrow. Um, it's called uh, Chefs or Lean Cuisines, and basically they talk to kids specifically about how to make nutritious meals on their own at a low cost and, and without having to get too uh, dangerous with turning on an oven or a stove or anything. So. That's going to be taking place at Lazy Creek starting tomorrow, so we're excited about that one as well. And then um, our athletic field rentals have been, I mean, our fields are at almost full capacity. Pretty much any time you go out there, you're going to see either the baseball field at Audie Murphy or the soccer field. 
completely inundated with teams, whether it be practices or, or, or games. Um, we have been able to allocate very um, uh, fair and equitably across the board. Um, we have, of course, Pony and Little League, and then we have several travel ball teams with the Minifee uh, roster, all Minifee kids playing that are using the fields, and then several soccer organizations, including the adult soccer organization, which is continuing to be a strong uh, sport component for us. So we, we're excited about that. I also just wanted to point out briefly that at the Lazy Creek After School Program, um, Aisha had reached out to NASA uh, to have one of their presenters come out. It's at the JPL Laboratory in Pomona. Uh, they came out and did a uh, brief presentation of the after school program on some, some STEM activities, talking to them about how rockets are launched into space and space travel and things like that. So uh, that was a really cool component that she was able to offer at no cost to the participants. And uh, we're looking to expand that. Monday we have a uh, representative from the Menifee Panthers Track Club coming out to uh, do a brief demo on track and field for the kids. So trying to expose them to as much as possible, and Aisha does a great job with that. So that concludes my report for the Recreation Division. Does anybody have any questions or anything else I can add? Just I want to highlight something, and uh, I know Jason tries to downplay this, uh, but I, of course, have to upplay it because I think it's equally important. We certainly want to provide a good service to the residents, but I always look at the numbers, too. And as you can see on here, uh, a dramatic spike uh, in activity and registration enrollment for the month of February, and I think that's because we're turning a corner. Uh, and marketing is, is ramping up. Um, We've just been able to connect better with the community um, in all forms. So creating relationships with folks who come into the, the centers and also reaching out to them through the Menifee Matters the website and social media, I think, has been our biggest draw, to be quite honest. So quite an increase. Uh, and I wish, you know, next year when we're at this point, we can compare side by side year over year. And right now we can't. But as you can see, this is uh, we're on pace to easily. Uh, um, I think we have already uh, exceeded last year's revenue figure, which was I think was one hundred and seventeen thousand uh, in revenue uh, when the contractor was operating. And so already we're at one forty one. And so that's that to me says that uh, staff is doing everything they can uh, and providing a service that apparently the residents really value. So thank you. And I'm sorry, if I can add one more thing, you'll see on the bottom of this slide uh, four of the members of our Youth Advisory Committee. Um, at the last uh, presentation, I mentioned that our Youth Advisory Committee is getting out into other agencies to learn, to um, collaborate. And this picture was taken in the city of Paris. They had an event that focused on um, safe teen dating practices and, and how our kids can be kind of the leaders in the community to, to educate their, their peers on, on safe teen dating practices. So they attended that, but that was after they had attended an anti-bullying slash college readiness um, program in the city of Fontana. So it was a very busy day for them. They were gone from about 7.30 till about 6 o'clock, and they had a tremendous time and learned a lot. So now we're looking at them to lead the charge into bringing some of those programs to Menifee. So we're excited for that. Good job. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Thanks for the update. All right, 9-4 special event. You're, you're back on. <laughs> that was quick. Okay, so... Um, getting ready for uh, to run the gamut again for our special events but it's going to be a very exciting time we have some really great partners and really great opportunities um, available for our residents here in the next few months a um, couple weeks away we have our uh, spring fest event at la ladera park um, we're working collaboratively with the lake menifee women's club and the menifee valley chamber of commerce on this event um, the chamber is providing all of the vendors not not the uh, the paid vendors we're securing some nonprofit vendors local sports organizations things like that but the chamber is bringing out uh, paid vendors that are coming to sell popcorn, drinks, uh, hot dogs, things like that uh, for the participants. The event is free. There's a minimal $3 cost for a wristband, which is an all-inclusive wristband for our kids' zone, which includes three different uh, bounces and inflatable jumpers, um, a uh, face painting station, and then the other free part, uh, components of the event are pictures with the Easter Bunny. We just encourage people to bring their own camera. Um, and then we're bringing back the Easter egg hunt this year. So... That's going to last about 30 seconds, and then, um, <laughs> but it'll be, it'll be a good 30 seconds for those kids. Um, we have it broken up pretty strategically so we don't get overwhelmed in one particular zone. Um, if, one zone gets, oops, sorry, if one zone gets completely inundated with kids, we'll move them to a different zone. So we have a pretty good plan in place, so we're knocking on wood that this is going to be a, a smooth return of this uh, to the event. So wish us luck on that one, but we're excited for it. Then on April 23rd, Menifee Better Together, the collaboration between the city, uh, Habitat for Humanity, um, the Interfaith 
numerous other organizations uh, will be taking place again on April 23rd, of course. The meetup time is actually going to be 8 a.m. I apologize for the typo there. And that will be, the meetup time will actually be at Sun City Civic Association. So we'll once again be using that facility to kick off the event and also close the event with the post-event barbecue at 12 o'clock. Um, so the Habitat is putting together the applications. We should have those ready sooner than later, hopefully. We're, we've been checking in with them regularly because we have a lot of residents that are requesting that information uh, to have their homes as part of this, this project. Um, and then Quail Valley Cleanup is the same day at Fab KBN Park. I keep getting the name wrong. Uh, so that's where residents can come and dump unwanted items at, at that park. Um, and then, of course, Pitch Hit and Run. Also, going back to Men Few Better Together, if the commission or the commission, any of your constituents are interested in participating, we, we strongly encourage that folks go on justserve.org to register. Um, that's really going to be our tracking mechanism to make sure uh, we, we know how many shirts to purchase because all the volunteers will get a shirt and all the volunteers will get a, a barbecue at the end of the event. So justserve.org to register. It's great for youth organizations that need to meet their hours for graduation or whatever else. So moving on to Pitch Hit and Run, Sunday, April 24th from 4 to 7 p.m. at Audie Murphy. Um, I've heard that the Little League kids are extremely excited about this. We've heard some kids already talking about it. Um, and we really haven't put too much out about it yet. So the flyer is going out next week. And then it will be on social media a couple of weeks before the event actually occurs. But it seems to be generating a lot of buzz. Um, I think obviously that has a lot to do with the fact that the champions go on to a regional event and then a sectional. And then from there they would go on to play at Angels or Dodger Stadium um, for the, the, the national competition. And that is a free event. So any ball players out there, boy or girl, they are more than welcome to come out and compete. Um, the age groups are separated, so we, we want them to come out and be a part of this unique event. I mentioned the Senior Health Fair, May 23rd from 10 to 2 at the Case and Acero Senior Center. It's a totally free event, so we really encourage our senior folks to get out there for that one. And then our Memorial Day Remembrance event on May 30th at Wheatfield Park. We're in the planning stages of that, working on presenters, booths. We want to make that once again like we did for Veterans Day a family activity that people can go and remember the sacrifices of our brave men and women in, in service. So uh, that'll be May 30th from 10 to 12 at Wheatfield Park. So, and then I, I believe I mentioned at the last meeting, but I want to make sure you guys have it on your calendar. The independent celebration this year is July 2nd. So I know typically it had been the week before. This year it is Saturday, July 2nd. So I want to make sure everybody has it on their calendar because we definitely want to see everybody out there. Our theme this year is, well, we're going to have a lot of themes, but our, our, uh, Goal this year is bigger and better. So we have some surprises in store that we're working on right now with Pyro Spectacular. So once we have that all locked in, I'll definitely bring it back and share with the commission. Any questions on special events? Okay, thank you guys. Thank you, Mr. Hendricks, we appreciate it. So I don't see Mr. Cooper here. Are we gonna do nine five or skip it? I'll just briefly, okay. I'll okay. briefly go through it. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, we had um, quite a few work orders. We had uh, the total of 92 this month, uh, and uh, we went and turned around 90 of them. We have two outstanding. Um, so our total right now is, uh, is 506 uh, with 495 out, 11 open, and those just either waiting on parts or uh, some kind of a tool or something that we need or just, uh, so, you know, we'll have to just wait we'll prioritize the ones that come in that need to be done right away. <clears throat> uh, on the, some of the special projects we did the, uh, they did a trail uh, fence repair on Marietta Road. I believe that was north of Chambers. Uh, that was after a traffic accident. So you can see the before picture on the left and the after picture on the right there. Uh, we uh, installed a no uh, overnight parking signs uh, at the parking lots of the, of all our parks so we can be in, uh, compliance with the ordinance or if somebody was parked there overnight, we can get them removed uh, with no questions or no legal matters to worry about. Uh, Spirit Park, uh, the playground surfaces got recoded with a binder. It started coming apart there uh, prematurely. Vendor came back out and um, put in the binder. Uh, we're actually doing AMR um, this week. Um, they should be done today. We'll leave the fence up for uh, over the weekend um, to make sure that cures before anybody gets on there. Um, like I mentioned earlier, the new clock was put in over at uh, Scott Road in the uh, Zone 3 LLMD. Um, Menifee logo, uh, branding logos on the monuments down at the bottom 
uh, right and left there, you'll see them, uh, Lazy Creek and Lyle Marsh. Um, and uh, community service projects we got going this weekend, um, Saturday and Sunday uh, at uh, Lyle Marsh, they'll be painting, sanding and painting um, the picnic shelters. And that is a, a church group or a, a combination or a, a group of three different churches or triangle, what they call themselves. Uh, and they're going to come in and do that part. And then we also have a Boy Scout troop coming in and working at uh, Rancho Ramona and AMR to do replanting of plants uh, and also spreading of mulch. Um, they'll be doing that Saturday, and the church project will be Saturday and Sunday. Uh, we might have to delay maybe Sunday if we get a lot too much rain. We won't be able to paint. And that's, that concludes the maintenance portion of it. All right, very good. Thank you. <clears throat> well, we appreciate all the updates, and um, so let's move on to item 10 now as commissioner reports. Uh, anybody have anything they want to offer? Commissioner Gidroy? Yeah, I'd like to let you know that the MCAC did meet twice, and we have voted and given out of 15 applicants, seven of them, $10,000 each in our recommendation. It was an excess of about, was it, $2,000 extra, which the uh, MCAC decided should go to the community cupboard. I tell you the names of all the recipients, excepting I'm be possibly messing up. I don't have my notes with me. They, everybody has a worthy cause, and it was very hard to rise up to you know, the level that, those, that, we, that we did award the money to were at. It's our hope that next year there'll be more money. We met twice because we realized from past experience it is too much to go through in one night and make a good decision. So we reviewed things the first week, came back the second week, and then voted on it. After getting a five-minute presentation from each of the participants, each of the applicants, that is, and uh, discussing what they had told us about their cause and giving us a packet on each one. It went really smoothly, and uh, we only got feedback from one who was disappointed, asking what they could do better the next time. So all in all, I'd say it was a success. And next it'll go out there, and the council will review what we've done. And uh, they can have the final word on it, of course, but I think it was very well done. Excellent, and of course, you're talking about community development block grant yes. money. Yeah. Anybody else uh, have any updates? Um, just one, um, in, in the uh, county uh, trails uh, meeting I attended uh, about two weeks ago, um, they're re-energizing their uh, uh, um, <clears throat> volunteer program. There's a new lady named Shannon Chamberlain that is a real uh, <clears throat> go-getter, and she's totally revamping the uh, Adopt-A-Trail program and several, several of the volunteer efforts. and. Uh, I suggested to her that she work with our Youth Advisory and Senior Advisory Committee in coordinating some efforts in the future, uh, trail cleanup, open space. Uh, she's even looking for people to go up to Idlewild. They're about to reopen uh, uh, McCall Park up there, so they're looking for some trail cleanup volunteers. And this is just a wonderful idea, you know, opportunity for us to go mingle with the, their efforts. Um, so. I uh, volunteered some email addresses, and hopefully we can get some uh, energy going that way. Um, one of the things that, uh, that we talk about is, is trail cleanup, and there's a few portions of the city that are, have become de facto dumps. Uh, right behind Bell Mountain, where I live, uh, up in the trails south of Scott, people just go up there and they, they take boats, refrigerators, mother-in-laws, whatever, and leave them up there. So uh, <clears throat> there's definitely the need for it. So I think if we could coordinate with them uh, to, uh, uh, you, you know, utilize their energies, I think that'd be a great idea. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. Commissioner Rosen. Uh, I just wanted to mention one thing to Rick. Um, re recognize that they could have a great impact on Bogart. Yeah, of course, we have a problem there. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> I have one quick one today. I was at the uh, county parks meeting, and um, there was an update about Salt Creek Trail and its connection then to Wildemar. 
and apparently there was a meeting uh, with the city here and some of those folks, I don't know, Robert, are you able to kind of give us an update or is that something we can maybe learn about in the future? But Sure, it was it was somewhat benign, the meeting was. Uh, essentially, it was uh, Dan York from Wildemar giving an update to all the folks in the room about their intent to connect to the Salt, Cre Salt Creek Regional Trail. Uh, and the feedback from us was that once this gets moving on the county level um, at our park, trail plan, uh, I'm sorry, our mass trails master plan will or already does identify Salt Creek as a thorough, uh, a, a throughput, uh, regional trail throughput. So the connection on the west edge of our city uh, is already there. Uh, and it just, it's just a function of having the, the county move forward with the project. Uh, and that, that was the extent of it. Um, I think more of it was uh, uh, Wildemar's interest in ensuring that they contribute to um, a walkable community so that's good uh, and, and a, a few of us worked uh, on those trails and tried to identify where those connections were and and there's a couple of them that have some issues and also that's why I was kind of curious as to if you guys landed on a on a location connectivity wise if it works its way through AMR and through the gift parcel or if that's some something else or I don't know how it works but we never were able to resolve that in the past. Yeah, it's, it's a little tricky because once it gets to our western edge, uh, right there at Canyon Lake or just north of Canyon Lake, uh, the connections there, essentially AMR North has a network of trails, some of which you've seen, some of which you haven't seen yet because the conceptuals haven't completely been done for all tracks. But you'll note that when it does occur, um, and I can bring back that exhibit that showed the master trail plan just for AMR, they're using that connection to exit the city on the west and make it, uh, a, I guess you could say, a, a, a more official connection to, uh, you know, Wildemar. So there are a lot of options uh, for them to choose from uh, to get through. But uh, for the most part, Wildemar has seen our trails plan and are committed to making that connection. So, uh, Marty? Yeah, I just wanted to ask <clears throat> if anything has been done to do the same thing with Murrieta because I have had no success in getting any feedback from Murrieta on connecting our trails to them. That, that would make two of us. Okay. Uh, they, they're, they seem to be taking a harder line on um, coordinating efforts with the city in general. Uh, as you know, the um, Scott Road interchange project has become a sticking point and to sort of sidestep uh, what we believe would be a, an increased cost and delay uh, with that planned construction. Um, the, the hope is that we will phase the project uh, and move the, the overpass north of the current overpass uh, for I think it's four lanes, and then the existing overpass would be demolished. So 100% of that interchange would be in the city. Um, and so I'm, I'm bringing that up to inform you that we can't even get any traction with assistance on, on the Scott Road interchange project, let alone trails. It's a difficult issue. Okay, um, I feel better, but it uh, doesn't help us any. My main concern, of course, was Keller because that is only one of two ways that anybody can get across the 215. That's right. And from what they're planning on doing, they're going to destroy that connection, which would be terrible. We've been trying to keep our finger on the pulse of that Murrieta Hills project because that is to our boundary at Keller. And I don't know if it's stalled or what's going on, but... I haven't heard much about it. It was supposed to go to planning commission last year, and then it, it didn't. I I, th I think they are they're cautiously 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 optimistic. They're I, it's like projects here. You know, we could get uh, you know a application come in through planning. Uh, you know, tentative gets reviewed, approved, and then it just sits. And that's likely what's happened here. Uh, the, you have to remember they also have other big projects that have impacts in the city, like. Uh, the Kaiser project, I think, and purely speculating, there are other things that they find to be more important right now, and 
that could be why you haven't seen it, but also that developer may just not be moving yet, so. That, that particular trailer we're talking about, I think you've probably seen it, hugely popular with bicycles right now. Every day there's lots of them yeah. down there using those trails. And once that project moves forward, unless the those, the, the, the trail will, will disappear unless they make a provision for it. It's, it's in the county's master plan, it's, uh, but we don't know where it's going. I had a question regarding um, our last meeting. We had an update from Mr. Brewer on the Salt Creek channel and, and then there was an article in the newspaper that had a couple of flaws and, and but there was one that I'm not sure about. Maybe you could help um, me get it straight. The article said that the flood control district, this is their project and that they're responsible and paying for it. Is that, and that they would have ultimate maintenance responsibility and all that? And I didn't think it was flood That's control, I thought it was parks. Yeah, I hadn't heard that at all. Uh, maybe they're referring to, uh, maybe it's grant money that was passed through the flood. I, I, I don't know, I had not heard that. Yeah. That, that is new. I don't know who this guy is that wrote the article, but I mean, I probably saw about eight mistakes and it's it's in one of our local papers. So mm -hmm. anyway, I'll, I'm gonna give this to you. And I don't know if you've seen it yet, but uh, it talks about flood control district being in charge of and fixing any problems. And it talks about Commissioner Gaunt bringing up some questions and the answer was that flood control would would take care of those things that Commissioner Gaunt brought up. and. Yeah, so oh, really? I, yeah, and I was like, I, I don't know what. Anyway, I wanted you to at least be aware of what's being published out there. Bill, yes. The usual response is, don't hold your breath. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Anything else, guys? Yeah. One thing, I'd just like to know where we're at with the recommendation to annex that acreage by Heritage High School. Anything going on with that? Have we lost sight of it? N not yet. I think I think the safest thing to do is wait until uh, our LAFCO proceedings get moving, because uh, you know annexation beyond is going to change that application as well. Okay. So it, it, we I, I think biting off more than we could chew is is um, a big a real threat, <laughs> a real concern. Let me put it that way. One LAFCO project at a time. Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. With that, I think we come to adjournment. Well, I'm sorry, uh, on future agenda requests. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I, I just want to clarify uh, one of the recommendations tonight was to examine the Adopt the Trail Park program with the. Yeah, maybe if we could get a presentation from Ken. Okay. Sure. And then uh, two other things that it, 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 uh, I can propose to be added for, if not the next meeting, the meeting after. Uh, one is. Uh, update on our Quimby revisions, which we intend to bring forward in the next month. Uh, our hope is to bring it before co this commission first, and then to uh, the Planning Commission uh, as a, um, obviously a, uh, a development code amendment, and then obviously to the City Council. Uh, the, the two components of that, one would be uh, examining the current structure of a quadrant system versus a citywide system of assessment on in lieu fees for park dedication. Uh, and then the second would be what the city would like to do with crediting uh, developers who over-dedicate. Uh, so those two items uh, are, and then, the, I'm sorry, that, those two components of that item. And then the, the next uh, item is uh, for receive and file of the LAFCO application, detachment application, so you all can see what's going into that. Oh, I agree. Yeah. All right, so we've got Three new items, adopt a trail, Quimby revisions, and LAFCO detachment application. I, I do want to provide you an update on the EO Peterson Dog Park. Uh, we will bring before commission, uh, probably in uh, April, um, a the outcome of a meeting with Paradise Chevrolet, who has approached us about wanting to sponsor and pay for a dog park. And our first uh, uh, response was, well, how about doing a facelift on an existing one. As you recall, we had some feedback from community that 
the homeowners around there were a little bit less than happy with the, the dogs uh, early in the morning. And there's some opportunity to redesign what's currently there and get it a little closer to Marietta Road. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be meeting with them shortly, and I want to bring back the commission an update on that. Um, so if, 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 the, if the money's right, we, we could do some great things there. Uh, may I just ask a question? Do they want their name on it? They may, uh, in which case you all would want to weigh in on that too. Big Chevrolet logo. <laughs> Very good. Does anybody else have any agenda requests for the future? All right, hearing none. May I have a motion that we adjourn? I have a motion. Second. I have a second. All in favor? Aye. We're adjourned. <laughs>